This is Dr. Jason Dulac coming to you from my office in Springfield, Virginia, and today I wanted to talk to you about dental implants. When you lose a tooth, the other teeth around it want to settle into place until they usually run into something or oppose something. So teeth have a tendency to drift forward and down until they have a chewing partner. So if it's anything but a back molar, I always recommend replacing a missing tooth. When you lose a tooth or teeth, the bone that supports it starts to resorb with it. And what this is showing is somebody who's lost all their teeth, they've started to have loss of the bone and cheek support. Over time, a lot of people have a collapsing of the jaw too, and it leads to an older appearance. This is something that can be mitigated by restoring with a well-fitting denture or dental implants that support the cheek and bone. One advantage of implants over a bridge, which is three crowns connected in a row, would be that you don't have to reduce or modify or drill on or cut the adjacent teeth. Here you can see a tooth and an implant side by side. The implant itself in the bone is to replace the root of the tooth, and then you can put a crown on top. Side by side, it's the closest thing you can get to a natural tooth. Here they're showing a bridge option in the 70s before dental implants. This was the best thing you could do to replace a missing tooth. Now with dental implants, we have a better option. The bridge does not support the bone underneath where the tooth was removed, and you have to crown the teeth on either side. An implant would not involve harming the adjacent teeth and also will support the bone. Here we're showing the process for a tooth replacement. The tooth is missing, an implant is placed, a couple months later, once the bone heals and grows into the implant, you place the top and the crown on it. As you start to miss more and more teeth sequentially and the bridge gets longer, the failure risk for the bridge increases exponentially. So if you're missing more than one tooth in a row, implants become an increasingly better treatment option. You'll also be able to floss between the implants, whereas a bridge, you wouldn't be able to floss between that. Here we're showing some implant supported dentures. The technical name for this is a hybrid denture. It's your permanent teeth. The teeth stay in the mouth. You brush these, you floss these, you treat it like a normal tooth. There's a couple ways you can do this. The two options on the left are prostheses that are permanently attached into the implants. On the far right, we have another option where the implants help retain the denture in the mouth, but you can still remove the denture, clean under it. You can take it out at night. This would be a much more cost-effective option if costs were a concern or bone were limited or you wanted to do something Thing to increase the retention of the denture, but didn't want to spend the money to upgrade to a fully retained denture. Here we're showing the steps for an implant supported denture. In this example, the patient's already missing the teeth. A number of implants are placed, usually four to six, five are pictured here, and the denture is attached permanently into the implants. This demonstrates a more cost-effective option to help retain and support the denture. In this case, the patient's already missing all their teeth. They have a traditional denture. Rather than placing five implants and making a new prosthesis that's permanently supported by the implants, you can place as few as two implants, place some little snaps on those that engage into the denture. The denture is much more stable, the chewing force goes up, and the retention goes up, especially on the bottom. Most people like their top dentures. The bottom dentures tend to slide around. This keeps them in place, adds retention and chewing function. If you're interested in dental implants, the first step is a consult with Dr. Dulac. He'll get a 3D x-ray and evaluate the bone to make sure you have adequate bone to place the implants. If not, we can work with an oral surgeon to do some more advanced bone grafting techniques and get you the implants you want. Dental implant placement is a quick, painless procedure, a little local anesthetic. It's much quicker and much less post-operative discomfort than extracting a tooth. So your post-operative discomfort will be minimal compared to when you had the tooth extracted. There's very minimal healing, very minimum post-op discomfort. In all my years of placing implants, I've never had to prescribe a narcotic for a patient after implant placement. Mild gum discomfort, mild pressure in the bone for three to five days if you feel anything at all. After the implant's placed, we allow it some time to heal, and then we can place the bridge or implant or crowns on top of it. Very few patients are not candidates for dental implants, but if you're not, we can go over some other options, traditional bridges, things like that, that could get you a better outcome. Dental insurance covers dental implants now. Before we do any procedure at the office, we always get you an estimate of what your insurance covers and what your out-of-pocket portion is. A single implant is the closest thing you can get to a natural tooth. And if you're in dentures currently, you're going to feel like you have natural teeth again with an implant-supported denture. Implant-supported dentures are much more stable, they're much harder to remove, they're more comfortable, they maintain the jawbone, and they greatly enhance chewing function. The chewing function with a denture is about a quarter of what your natural teeth are. Implants will get you much closer to a natural tooth. Implants cannot get decayed, so you don't have to worry about them getting decayed like natural teeth. They can get gum infection around them, so it is important to clean them and to come in for routine checkups.